But let's focus on what else happened in the Champions League. In the early game, the big surprise, no question. The defending champions at the Santiago Bernabeu <coughs> losing against Seska Moscow. Three goals to know was the first time they've lost a home match in the group stages for nine years. In the end, though, it didn't matter because Roma couldn't beat uh, Victoria Pilsen, so Real Madrid still top, still qualify in that right side of the group. But Maka, you've played in Madrid. You know the hysteria that is going to surround this even more after what yeah. has been a, a shocking start to the season. Yeah, and it was their heaviest defeat at home in, in, in this cup competition, hasn't it? So that you, you really don't want that. They, they were expected to go and win tonight, even with the number of changes they had. They still had... You know, Marcelo, Isco, who needs to prove a point to Santiago Solari, Asensio, Benzema played, and then they, when they were in trouble at half-time, they brought on Gareth Bale and Tony Kroos. So they had, they had stars on the pitch, albeit there was a lot of changes, but you'd still think they were good enough to beat Siska Moscow. I mean, they've done the double over them this year, which is incredible to think. Um, and going back to, you know, the fringe players to a certain extent, it just shows you that Madrid, that the fringe players are nowhere near good enough. I mean, we have this... This, um, this order about Real Madrid, we think that these players are invincible at times, but it shows once you get down to the bare bones, and we've, you know, we'll mention it again and again and again as the season goes on without Ronaldo in their side, they look like an average team and they're going to have to improve a lot. Yes, they've topped the group and it doesn't really matter, but you know, you know Madrid as well, Dan, to get beat 3-0 in front of your home crowd and you know, inflict the worst defeat they've ever had in this competition at home, you know, that's a lot to take for, uh, for Santiago Solari and, of course, the, the, the team itself. Is it surprising, you, Maka, how much they have clearly missed Cristiano Ronaldo? No, no. I think we all discussed it in the summer, mate, didn't we? If they, if, they, if they let him go for financial and economic reasons, fine. We all understand that. We know what Cristiano's, his age and the amount of wages he was getting and the amount that they were going to bring in. The fact that they didn't even attempt to replace him you know, that's the shocking part. Yes, they brought a goalie. Yes, they brought Audrey Azol in at right back. But they never attempted mm. to try and replace Cristiano with somebody. And Benzema, Bale and Asensio and Isco are nowhere near the same type of substitute for a goal a game for <laughs> over nine years in your career at Real Madrid. It's just impossible. Meanwhile, elsewhere today, you take a look at Group F. It's a strange old game. Manchester City uh, coming from behind to beat Hoffenheim by two goals to one to guarantee top spot. In the end, a 1-1 draw for Leon against Shakhtar sent the French side through. Shakhtar having to make do with the Europa League. Meanwhile, what a game it was between Ajax and Bayern Munich. Both teams had already qualified. It was all about who was going to finish top. A win for Ajax would see them first. In the end, though, they can only manage a 3-3 draw. So it's Bayern who qualify top of the group.